All right, this is going to be a creation seminar series. We're going to do the gap theory. Um, we're actually, I'm actually going to do a, a 1E, the full version, later, but this is just going to be on the gap theory. If you guys want to, you can email me at g-o-d-s-o-h-m-a-n at gmail.com. <clears throat> so today we're going to do a question, answers, and objections about the gap theory. Um, remember, I'm doing the uh, Woe series. Um, it basically covers uh, the rapture and the church at end times, but there's also going to be a beginning part of it, um, 1A through 1, 1A through 3. So I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, you know, it's, it's about there on the map. Um, it's actually a little bit further over, but I keep trying to move it. It doesn't move it very well, but yeah. And, uh, you know, what, what I believe is um, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. And that's in 2 Timothy uh, 3.16. 1 Peter 3 says, uh, But sanctify the Lord God in your heart, and be ready to always give an answer to every man that asketh you, and reason for the hope that is with you for meekness and fear. So um, I was trying to explain to the guy about the gap theory, and he really wasn't understanding what I was saying, so I gave him my business card. I said, email me, and also this is my um, YouTube channel, so I'll be making a video about it in the next couple of days, so you can always check on that. And what I hope to accomplish in this seminar is um, I want to strengthen your faith in God's Word. Uh, to, you know, I believe the Bible is true from cover to cover. And if you're not saved, I want to try to convert you, or at least make you rethink your faith in evolution. And also, um, if you are saved and you're not doing much for the Lord, I'm going to try to make you feel a little uncomfortable. You know, 2 Peter 3 uh, says, Knowing this first, and there should be coming the last day scoffers, walking after their own lusts. And saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they are willingly ignorant of three things. By the word of the heaven, by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that was then, that that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But by the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word that are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the days of judgment and perdition of the ungodly men. So the scoffers in the last days are willing to three things: the creation the flood, and the coming judgment. And the reason why is because if there's a creation, it means there has to be a creator, which means that the creator has certain rules and guidelines you need to live by. For instance, you know, thus saith the Lord. They're worried about the flood because if there's a flood, that means that the creator can actually judge his world. And so um, if they don't live up to what the creator wants, then they're going to be punished. And they're afraid of the coming judgment because that means if there's a coming judgment, then that means that they're going to be judged. So they're afraid of those three things. And sadly, many Christians are also ignorant of the creation, the flood, and the coming judgment. And this ignorance has caused them to compromise the clear teaching of the Bible with currently you know, accepted theories of science, you know, billions of years via the gap theory and the day of age theory. And there's three, uh, key points of my woe series. Um, it's a 7,000 year timeline. The first one is a 1A through E. That's going to be the creation, the when, why, and how. Number two is going to be the flood. Then there's Daniel's prophecies. I've already done uh, four, which is uh, A through E, the 70th week of Daniel. I'll be doing uh, five soon, which is the thousand year reign. Six is the final judgment. And then seven, you know, what should we do? So there's the uh, creation, <clears throat> the beginning of the world. That's going to be the flood. That's going to be wrong. You know, the no and the flood. Daniel made some prophecies over here. <clears throat> the little small yellow strip right there. That's going to be the, uh, the, the, the 70th, 70th week of Daniel, or the seven-year tribulation, which I've already covered in my YouTube series. Then you have the 5A3, which is going to be the day of the Lord, which is the thousand-year reign. The uh, great white throat judgment, where everybody's going to be uh, judged. And um, that's going to be number six. Um, so a 1A basically is who is God and where did he come from? Um, you know, we're going to cover this on seminar number one, um, which I haven't started yet. Uh, 1B is going to be um, how the universe was created, the Big Bang, or the spoken unto existence. And we're going to cover this on uh, seminar 1B. And then 1C is how old is the Earth? Is it billions of years old, or is it 6,000 years old? 
One D is going to be what was the Garden of Eden like and during this pre flood time? The Bible says people live to be over 900 years old, and the question is, how is that possible? One E, which is what I'm kind of going to talk about today, is uh, the ejections. Uh, what about the gap theory, the days theory, light from stars, carbon dating, things like that? I'm just going to cover the gap theory today, and then um, the next one's going to be the days theory, which is going to cover light from stars and carbon dating. So basically, the gap theory in a nutshell basically says that between Genesis 1 1 and Genesis 1 2, there was a large gap. Um, basically, meaning that um, all the geologic columns and all the different billions of years could have happened during this time. You know, 1 1 says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and then 1 2 says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And they think there's some type of a gap there, um, you know, billions of years that's going to cover um, all the geologic ages. Genesis 1-1 um, in verse 5 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. It emphasizes the first day. There's only one first day in history, and that was the first day. Um, you can't have more than one the first days because there's only one the first day. But uh, many many other versions will you know try to change the vibe a little bit. Like they got out uh, Acts 4, 24, 8, 8 um, 37, 1 John 5, 7, Revelations 1, 11. Mark 4, 15 says, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the world. Um, you know, it's it's interesting how different different Bible translations have actually skewed what the Bible says to basically take the deity of God away and to, um, you know, not talk about judgments. In the uh, re revived substandard version. It says, um, God called light day, and darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, one day. Well, there's many one days, um, but there's not the first day. And then the second day it says, and God called the firmament in heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning, a second day. Again, there's many a second days, but there's not the second day. In fact, if you look at most of the Bible translations, um, King James says the first day. The, the NASB says one day. The NLT says one day, the Amplified Version says one day, the uh, RSV says one day, and the ASV says one day. Again, you know, somebody's wrong because the King James is clearly saying it is the first day, and that would be the, the very first day of creation, where all the other Bible translations are saying it's just a day. So, uh, Sid, Sid Lowe Baxter says in his book, Exploring, um, Exploring the book, he said between the first the first two verses of Genesis, there is ample scope for all the geologic errors. Then he says later on, um, a pre adamite rebellion and the judgment of Lucifer as associated with angelic beings. You know, the it, without form of void is all over the Bible. In Jeremiah four twenty three through twenty seven, Isaiah twenty four one, forty five eighteen. It clearly indicates that the earth has undergone a cataclysmic change as a result of a divine judgment. And the face of the earth bears everywhere the marks of such a catastrophe. There is not wanting imitations which connect via the uh, previous testing and the fall of the angels. And if you see Ezekiel 28, 12 through 15, Isaiah 14, 9, uh, 14, 9 through 14, and certainly go beyond the uh, kings of Tyre and Babylon. <clears throat> There's actually a sculptural Bible note at, the, uh, at uh, Genesis 1, 2. You know, James Hutton, he um, uh, had a book called The Theory of the Earth. He said that the Earth was much older than what people originally thought. And see, what happened was, is James Hutton's book came out, The Theory of the Earth. It was published in the 1795. And then uh, Thomas Chalmers, uh, he vented the gap theory to compromise the Bible with new truths of science in 1814. And then Darwin's book came out in 1859, and it meets little resistance from the neutralized Christians. And Genesis 1-2 says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. In Hebrew, um, tohu wabohu means unformed and unfilled, but it doesn't mean destroyed. Uh, tohu is used 20 times in the Old Testament with 10 different meanings. For instance, Isaiah, Isaiah 45-19 and Job 26-17. There's a great book about the um, gap theory. It's called Unformed and Unfilled, the Critiques of the Gap Theory by uh, Weston Fields. And also make sure to, to uh, watch the video debate between uh, uh, with Hugh Ross and uh, Ken Hoven for a lot more information on that.
Uh, this is actually a book by Ken Hovind. It's a book of exposing the many problems with the gap theory. And you can get it from uh, DrDowner.com. This house right here is an example of what is unformed and unfilled. It is, it is still being built, and there's nothing inside of it. So it is unformed and unfilled, but it's not destroyed. As you can see, it's unformed and unfilled. Um, it's still being built. Jeremiah uh, 4.23 says, and, and I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens they had no light. Jeremiah 4.24.25 says, I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and there was and all the birds of the heaven were flood. But this passage has nothing to do with, with creation. This house is also unformed and unfilled, but this is clearly destroyed. Exodus 20.11 says, For in six days the Lord made heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that in them is. The question is not, what does it say? The question is, do you believe what it says? If he created the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that in them is, that's everything. That's everything that there possibly could be. And it says he did it in six days. This is he rested on the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Exodus 31, 17 says, It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested. Genesis 2, 2 says, On the seventh day God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Again, it's saying the seventh day. Genesis 2, 3 says, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in all he had rested from all of his work, which he created, and which God created and made. Hebrews 4, 4 says, For he spoke in a certain place on the seventh day, on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his work. Romans 5.12, Wherefore, as one man's sin entered in the world, and death by sin, and so passed upon all men for all that have sinned. So he's saying that one man's sin, and death by sin, passed to all men. Well, if there was life before Adam, then that's, that's not possible. Romans says, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. So he's saying that Adam was the first man. If there was a pre-Adamite world, then how could how could there be death before Adam? First, First Corinthians 15 says, For since by, by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so Christ shall be made alive. So it's saying that, you know, Adam was the first death. First Corinthians says, The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. People ask me all the time, didn't plants die? Are plants alive? And um, I haven't made Seminar 7, but when you see Seminar 7, you'll find, find this out. But I'll cover it really quickly. In Psalms 1-3, it says, The leaf shall not wither. Isaiah 1-30 says, The leaf fadeth. Isaiah 47 says, The grass withers, the flower fadeth. Verse 8, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth. But our, you know, the word of the Lord is forever. Jeremiah 8-13 it says the fig tree and the leaf shall fade. There's no mention anywhere of plants dying. They wither, they fade, they it wilts, but they never die. James 1.11, but where the, the grass and the flower that felleth. What about the ruin restoration theory? Didn't God tell them to replenish the earth? You know, people believe that the ruin restoration theory meant that everything was created, it was all destroyed, and then God told them to uh, start all over again. Genesis 1.28, it says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth. So there's the word replenish. Well, you know, a classic example of the way English words can change meanings. you got to find the meaning when the time was written. So this uh, Webster's 21st Century Dictionary says, Replenish means to make full again. Um, in, the, in the Greek, it says, Be fruitful and multiply. I'm sorry, the Hebrew, it says, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the word they use for replenish means to fill. In 1611, the word replenish simply meant to fill. By 1650, a second definition of refill was added to the dictionary. For hundreds of years, the word was used primarily to mean fill. In Genesis 42, 23, or 20, 42, 25, it says, Then Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn. And Genesis 44, 1, he commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the man's sacks with food. 
Why not replenish since they were refilling them? Why would they say fill them? Why wouldn't they say ref you know, replenish them since they were supposed to refill them? So in uh, 1824, the word replenish meant to fill. So the first definition is to fill, and the second definition is to recover from f former fullness. See, there's the first definition there to fill, and then the second one will be to recover from former fullness. Back in 91, um, again, replenish meant to fill. And then the second definition was to recover from former fullness. The Web Webster's Common Dictionary in 1892, the two definitions had switched. So then at first it said to fill up again, and then it said to fill completely. In 1889, the dictionary only shows one meaning. Um, this was the second definition for 100 years ago, and it's not the meaning at all 400 years ago. So this one, it says to make full or complete again. As you can see here in 21st century dictionary. You know, the English words sometimes change meaning with time. Replenish used to mean to fill. And then the second, the second definition was to restore or to refill. You know, in my childhood days, the word cool meant not hot. And the word gay, it meant happy. I mean, look at this book, verse right here in James. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou there in a good place, and say to the poor, Stay, in the, stay thou there, and sit here under my footstool. Wouldn't it be really interesting if um, the word gay in this passage really meant that what it means today? It meant he wore the happy clothing. It means he was a happy guy. Romans 1.13, it says, For... Now I would have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to cometh unto you, but I was let hitherto. You know, the word let used to mean he was prevented. Now it means to allow. Psalms 119.89 says, Forever, O Lord, that word is settled in heaven. God promised to preserve his word. He did not promise to preserve the English language. Genesis 1.28, it says, God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it. Ezekiel 28, 12 through 15 uh, talks about, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou, Lucifer, has been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, and it mentions all the precious stones. It says, In the day that thou wast created. So here is saying that uh, the Lucifer was created. It says, thou, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee thou, set, that set thee so. That was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and walked down the midst of the stone of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till Nicolae was found in thee. So how could how could there be a you know Lucifer's fall before one two, when it's saying here that um, he was created? It says in uh, Genesis uh, day tw Genesis two twenty eight, it says the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put a man whom he had formed. Ezekiel 28, 2 says, Thus saith the Lord God, because thy heart is filled up, and thou hast said, I am God, I sit in the seat of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. With thy wisdom and thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee rich. With thy wisdom and with thy understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches. And thy heart is lifted up because of these riches. Ezekiel says, Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. So Satan's heart was lifted up with pride because of certain things, because of his power, his wisdom, his riches, his beauty. Uh, Job, 20, uh, Job 38, 4 through 7 says, Where was thy when I laid up the foundations of the earth? And all the sons of God shouted for joy. They're talking about angels. Well, Lucifer was an angel. And it says here in Job that all the sons of God shouted for joy. So that must mean that Lucifer was shouted for joy when... Uh, God created the foundations of the earth. Genesis 1, 9 through 13 says, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and gathered together of the waters called the seas. And the evening and the morning were the third day. So if you laid the foundation of the earth on the third day, it says right here the dry land appeared, and that means that Lucifer could have been created until at least day three. 
so it couldn't have been a pre-Adamite re rebellion and Lucifer's fall back in one one two, when clearly it had to be no later, no no earlier than uh, day three. Genesis one thirty one says, and God saw everything that He had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Well, if if Lucifer already fell on the third day, then how can everything be very good? Obviously, Lucifer had, Lucifer had to fall after the sixth day. For the sixth day to be very good. People ask all the time, aren't created and made different words with different meanings. Genesis 1, uh, 26 and 27 says, And God said, make, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he them. He had male and female. So it's using made and created in the same, the same verse. Genesis 5, 1. This is the book of generations of Adam, in the days that God created man, and the likeness of God made him. So here again, created and made is using the same verse. Uh, you know, you can uh, see more on seminar seminar about that. Well, the gap theory proponents teach first earth was destroyed and God had to may, remake the earth, which is the ruin restoration idea. From Revelations 21, 1 says, And then I saw a net of heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. So if the first earth was passed away here in Revelations, then how could there be an earth before that if this was the first earth? Hebrews 1, 13, 14 says, But to which the angel said, He at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make the enemies thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that... I'm sorry, this is Matthew... And he answered them and said, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? So Jesus is talking to Matthew and he says that the uh, Adam, Adam was the beginning. Mark 10, 6 says, From the beginning of creation, God made them many male and female. So Mark's saying that the creation of Adam was the beginning of creation. So how could there be a pre-Adamite rebellion if, if Adam was the beginning of creation? So the question is, when did Satan fall? Well, everything was created in six days. And it says that Satan was created. It says Satan was in Eden until he sinned. Eden was made on day six. And since angels were created to be ministering spirits for us, why would God create them millions of years before man? See, if, if angels are there to basically work for us, then why would he create angels millions of years before he created man? Satan and the angels rejoiced when the foundations of the earth were laid. The foundations were laid on day three. Day six, everything was very good. And Adam was 130 when Seth was born. We don't really know when Cain and Abel was born. <clears throat> but we know that Cain and Abel was born before Seth. The creation of Adam was, was the first man, and it was the beginning, according to Matthew and Mark in 1 Corinthians. There was no death until Adam sinned, from Genesis, Romans, and 1 Corinthians. Genesis 1.5 says this was the first day. Satan wanted to ascend above all the stars, and the stars were not even made till day four. So basically what I think is that Satan fell after day seven, when everything was perfect, and before Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden on day eight. But you know, it's very possible that, um, that Adam and Eve was in the garden for a hundred years. We don't know how long Adam and Eve was in the garden. People assume it was on day eight. But it could have very easily been about 100 years. We know that Seth was born when Adam was 120. So if he was kicked out when he was 100, then he had 20 years to have Cain and Abel and then have Seth after that. So it's perfectly fine. I mean, he could have he could have kicked out day eight. He could have kicked out, you know, 100 years later. We don't exactly know, but it definitely wasn't day eight. You know, according to the chart here, it says it was very good until man sins. And it's very possible that it was 100 years after creation. And that's when God cursed the world. Um, you know, God is eternal and outside of time, space, and matter. Um, not Satan. 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 Satan's limited to all three. Uh, Ken Hovind made a good uh, little argument when he was doing a debate with somebody. You can look it up on YouTube. It's called, Where Did God Come From? And here's some problems with the gap theory. It was invented in 1814 by a Scottish theologian. And a Masonic Lodge member, his name was Thomas Chalmers, it is not the historical position of the church. And it, um, 
It was given more circulation in 1876 by George uh, Pemmer in Earth's earliest age. It really took hold of Christian circles due to Schofield's Reference Bible in 1909. The gap theory also violates scriptures. If you look at Genesis 1-5, 2-2-2-3, Exodus 2011, Hebrews 4-4, it puts death before Adam's seed, which uh, violates Romans 5-12 and 1 Corinthians 15-21. And it has Satan falling before day 7, which violates Genesis 1-31, 2-8, and Ezekiel 28-12-15. Here's a question to ask Gap Theory believers. Was there death before Adam's sin? Because obviously the Romans and Corinthians say that Adam was the first death. question is, when did Satan fall? Because if Satan didn't fall until after day 7, then he couldn't have fell during 1-1 uh, one, one and 1-2. One, the question is, was Satan already the god of the world when God gave Adam dominion uh, over the earth? Um, because again, that goes against scriptures. Thousands of species of living animals are also found as fossils. Did God recreate these? When God said everything was very good, was Satan evil? And were Adam and Eve standing on top of thousands of dead plants and animals? And wouldn't Noah's flood have erased all the evidence of these billions of years taught in the gap theory? What did God mean in Exodus 20, 11 and uh, 31, 17? Does everyone who read the Bible need a guru to tell them what the Bible really says? So why can the word let in Romans 1, 13 change meanings in 400 years? But the very replenished cannot. And why do you need a gap? What took place during this time? He also had question 11. Why does Revelation 21.1 state that the earth we live on is now the first earth? It really is not. And the last question is, was Adam the first man, as Corinthians 15.45 says? You know, there's a lot of questions that we have to ask people that believe in the gap theory. To me, the gap theory makes no sense and it really serves no purpose. I mean, what's the point of creating everything and destroying it if it's just, you know, I mean, the, the flood's going to ruin everything anyways. Well, anyways, I appreciate you guys watching my video. Make sure you guys uh, like my channel, uh, subscribe, and also put a comment down in the description. If you guys have any questions regarding the gap theory, uh, make sure you ask that question down there. And I'll be doing the day age theory very soon. Again, I appreciate you guys watching my video and have a great day.